Hello, I'm Laura Bennett with German with Laura, and this is my sixth video in a 10-part series on how to learn German smarter, not harder. This video is on the clensions, which is a continuation of the previous video on the case system. So if you haven't already watched that video, you really should do that first. However, if you haven't seen the even earlier videos, don't worry about that. You can catch up on those later. If you have already watched the video on the case system, then you're at the right place. This is the next video to watch. Here we go. At the end of the previous video, we were looking at these tiny little changes that were happening in German sentences, and that's where we want to start again now. So check it out. In a sentence such as, der große Mann heißt Tom, right? The tall man is named Tom, or is called Tom. We have, for example, this R and this E are examples of these tiny little changes called the clensions. And in the next sentence, where we say, I know a rich man, ich kenne einen reichen Mann, we have this N and this N are also declensions. And in our final example, ich gab jenem armen frierenden Mann eine Jacke. We have the clensions here with this M, some more Ns, and then this E is also a declension. So now the thing about declensions and how they relate to the case system is that it is these slight little changes, these single letters at the ends of very particular words in German that communicate the case to us so that we know who is who and what is what in a sentence. So to directly continue what we were talking about in that previous video on the case system, if I analyze these sentences, we have have der große Mann is in the nominative case. It's the subject of the sentence, and these particular declensions of the R and the E are part of how I knew that, okay? And in the next sentence, the ich is the subject, and then our rich man, right, a rich man, is now the direct object of this sentence, and that's communicated by these two ends on einen reichen Mann. And then in the final sentence, we have ich again in the nominative case as a subject of the sentence. Now that poor freezing man is the indirect object which goes into the dative case and then eine Jacke is the accusative case because it's the direct object. Whoa! So again, the whole concept here is that in order to use the case system in German, in order to communicate who is who and what is what, what's the subject noun, what's the direct object, what's the indirect object, and therefore nominative, accusative, and dative, we have to use the clensions. And the thing about the clensions is that we are usually taught declensions by using 10 or more different charts. Whoa. And so this is really, really overwhelming. Everything gets spelled out for you and you'll have this whole chart for this is how you say the in all of the different ways in German. And this is how you say a uh, in all the different ways in German. And these are the declensions that you need to put on adjectives such as groß uh, or reich or um, frierend. Like you have all of these different charts and there's strong endings and weak endings and mixed endings. It is so confusing. If you have actually tried looking into the case system and declensions before watching this video, you know exactly what I'm talking about. But the good news is there is an easier way to work with the case system, to work with declensions. Check out this table. This is my all-in-one declensions chart. We have five declensions. We have R's, we have E's, we have S's, we have N's, we have M's, and then every once in a while we have no declension at all, which I'll symbolize with this dash, okay? So this whole chart is made up of these single letters of declensions. And again, these declensions have to go on to the ends of the words coming in front of nouns so that we know which noun is the subject, which noun is the direct object, which noun is the indirect object, right? Therefore, what case it's in, right? All the cases are listed here on the sides, just like we have all of the genders 
here across the top, right? So we're taking into account the gender of the noun. That's why it's so important to know the der, die, das coming in front of German nouns. Then we have the case, right? We have to know that too. We have to know the role that the, that the noun is playing. And then we can refer to the all-in-one declensions chart to give us the declension combinations that we need at one of these 16 intersections of this chart. So why would you want to work with this chart, right? This looks complicated. This looks like a lot of work. Well, you need to realize what the alternative to this is, okay? The alternative to working with this one chart is working with 10 or more different charts. That's the conventional way to learn the German case system and learn declensions. They're charts that look like these. Okay, so this is a chart of specifically all the ways to say the word the in German. Okay, every single one of these words means the. Okay, it's just a matter of if it comes in front of a feminine noun or neuter noun or whatever gender noun, or if it's in the nominative case or the accusative case or whatever case, but this is how you say the, right? And the thing about these charts, right? So you have to imagine a chart like this, but now multiplied by 10 if not more, these charts are complicated and confusing to work with and they're crutches, right, that will never help you truly speak German proficiently, much less fluently, because they're spelling everything out for you, right? They're saying, okay, here's the chart for saying the, then here's this other chart for saying a, uh. here's this chart for strong endings on adjectives and weak endings on adjectives and mixed endings on adjectives, it's a lot of stuff to keep track of, but they're spelling it all out for you. And instead, you can learn just the declensions themselves. So check this out, R-N-M-S. These are the declensions for masculine nouns in the four different cases. Remember that, R-N-M-S. You see them here at the end of these four different ways of saying the word the in German. Then look at the all-in-one declensions chart again, and you see R N. M, S, okay? So the only one declensions chart gives you just the declensions themselves, and I will teach you in this video and in the next one, you have to hang in there with me, how you can know which of these declensions to put onto which words and when so that you can nail declensions 100% of the time, okay? This is totally possible you can do this. So now, that said, keep in mind before we continue that the case system and declensions, this is such a huge topic that in my German Foundations course, we spend three weeks talking about this, right? This is one short little video where I'm giving you the, the briefest synopsis possible of how declensions work in German, but normally we study this for three weeks. It's a full 50% of the entire German Foundations course because this is such a big, important topic. Okay, so that said, let's look now at those three examples that we had right at the beginning, but now through this lens of the all-in-one declensions chart. All right, so we have der große Mann heißt Tom. Yet again, reminder, der große Mann, this is in the nominative case because it's the subject of the sentence, okay? We know that Mann is a masculine noun, it would be der Mann, because it's referring to a male person. So that means in the all-in-one declension chart, the intersection that we have to be at is where masculine intersects with the nominative. So that's going to be right here. And you can see that then reflected in the declensions on the words coming in front of man. There's the R and there's the E. All right, so now second example, Ich kenne einen reichen Mann. I know a rich man. We have nominative case is the ish. Whoops. Okay, nominative case is the ish, followed by the verb, then the default, like we talked about in the previous video, to using the accusative case for the next noun. Okay, we still have a masculine noun because we're still working with man. Okay, so we're still going to be in this masculine column, but now we're in the accusative case. So we've just shifted to a new section in the all-in-one declension chart. Now we are right here and we can see the declensions. N and N. Cool. All right, third example. 
Ich gab jenem armen, frierenden Mann eine Jacke. All right? If we analyze this sentence, right, we still have our nominative case first, right? In the standard sentence, the nominative case containing that subject noun is going to be first, followed by its verb. Now, what is it that I'm giving? I'm giving a jacket, eine Jacke, that makes that the direct object, okay? And to whom am I giving it? To the poor, freezing man, that makes that the indirect object, and indirect objects have to go into the dative case. So now in, in terms of our chart, right, we still have a masculine noun, but now we're in the dative case. That puts us at this intersection of the all in one declensions chart. And we see that in the declensions, right? The M is right here, and then we have two Ns at the end of Armen and Frierenden. Okay, so this is all well and good, but you still need some more information. You need to know how to do this for yourself. And the way to do this for yourself is you need one more element. You need to learn about what I call declension patterns. Declension patterns are how you know which declension from a given intersection to put onto which word. There are patterns for this. You're not going to hear about this anywhere else. Okay, so click off on the side to select either the next video on the four declension patterns, or if you haven't watched this series from the beginning, this is a good time to get caught up by starting with video one. But before you make that choice, firstly, in the description below, click to open up a link in a new tab where you can download a free PDF printable of the all-in-one declensions chart, the four declension patterns, which you're going to learn about next, and a cheat sheet on how to use these resources correctly. Then finally, if you haven't already, click to subscribe to my channel so you know when I come out with new videos. All right, now, whichever video you select next, I'll see you there.